Choosing the right e-bike can be tricky, especially with so many brands out there. So the first cut that you make is based on price. And then when you find the right price range, you realize that if you want hydraulic brakes, cushy suspension, nice grips, nice shifters, things like that, you're quickly over budget. And then you give up and continue to ask mommy for rides. Money, please! Money, please. I'm here to tell you, don't do that. There are brands out there that give an affordable price and a nice ride. DYU is one of those brands. This is the king and is a nice bike for the price. There's only a handful of bikes in this category that can hit 30 miles per hour. Is the king one of them? One is 17, two is 22, and three is 29. Well, I almost got that with pedal assist. Let's see if I can with a half twist throttle. The throttle matches the pedal assist level, so on pedal assist one, that's topping out at 16, two is 24, and three is 30. If speed is one of the traits that you like on an affordable e-bike, there you go. Now, how about motor reaction time? You know, how long does it take when you pedal for the power to come on? For pedal assist sensitivity, I'm on the highest gear, go to about 20 miles an hour if I stop pedaling. About a half a second before the power kicks off. If I re-engage, there's one, two, just over two revolutions before the power comes back on. And then with the throttle, you have about a half an inch before the power engages. So going around 17, 18 miles an hour, if I release it, power cuts off right away. If I re-engage, about a quarter of a second before it comes back on. The power delay with pedal assist is a little bit long, two full revolutions before that power kicks on. As far as the throttle goes, that's what I typically see for a bike in this price range. One of the mysteries about this bike is how heavy it is. It weighs 97 pounds. I review fat bikes that have a bigger frame and just overall a bigger look that weigh 20 pounds less. So I'm not exactly sure where all the weight is. Anyways, with that type of weight, we should expect a slow acceleration. All right, off the line with pedal assist. Let's see when the power comes on. There's one revolution, about one and a half before the power kicks on. It's a pretty slow start, not a lot of power on pedal assist. Now with the throttle, there was more power for the speed test. Let's see if there's more power with the acceleration. Ooh, engages right away. About twice as fast than pedal assist. So the theme of this bike is, if you want power, use the throttle. There's three things you need to haul butt up a hill. A light frame, a powerful motor with a lot of torque. The King has two of the three, a 750 watt motor that produces 75 newton meters of torque. I moved and uh, my new hill is about uh, 10 to 12% grade. Starts to climb right away. Got a full charge speed mode three. First gear, holding at 11 miles an hour. This is a, about a two and a half block long hill. Bike's doing 100% of the work, I'm just, keeping those pedals turning 12 and 13 and pretty much over the top and that's it. That did a lot better than I thought or would have expected for an almost 100 pound frame bike. 11 miles per hour up a 12% grade is pretty awesome. For a bike that costs as much as the King does, I would typically see very cheap mechanical brakes, but not with the King, you've got nice hydraulic. Now for the brakes, the right side controls the rear, left side the front, light braking is a little grindy, you know, but smooth. And then hard braking going around 20 miles an hour. Oh yeah. It's hard to tell, but that did stop very quick. Only took around 15 to 20 feet from going 22 miles per hour. <laughs> That's a little slippery. Thirty seems to be the number that separates a good bike from a great bike. For the speed test, hit thirty miles per hour. There's only a handful of bikes that have done that. As far as range, there's only a few that have also hit over thirty miles. The King is one for two so far. Let's see if we can hit two for two. That wraps up the race test. My app recorded 30.94 miles with almost a thousand feet of elevation. Now here's the kicker. The other brands that hit over 30 miles per hour, my average speed was only 20 miles per hour. With the King, I averaged 25 miles per hour. So over 30 miles at 25 miles per hour, that is a awesome range. They don't call this the King for nothing. It's my best Elvis, so sorry. <laughs> Now 
As most of you guys know, on 5.11, I've got the bike set to my height, you know, where I can fully extend my leg. And at that point, this is a mountain bike style posture, but it's an interesting feel because it's a very high bike. It's kind of short and stocky. So you are sitting up a ways. And when bikes do that, typically the balance isn't the best. But with this one, it's not the worst I've ever felt. It's definitely, <laughs> I felt more stable fat bikes. I got a lap of the handlebar length. I mean, it is just so small for the size of the bike. It gives the bike a smaller fill. So if you're a smaller rider that wants a big frame fat bike, you actually might like the size of the handlebars. I like the grips, they're wingtip, they feel nice. They're bolted onto the handlebars so they don't move. On the right side, you got a seven speed Shimano shifter going up one to seven, one at a time. Coming back down, I can go from seven to one in one push. The tires aren't that beefy and knobby. And so when you're cruising 20, 25 miles an hour, there's very little noise. Suspension on this is actually pretty awesome. Them. and I'm just gonna hop off this curb now and it honestly sounds a lot worse than it feels and then of course you got the seat pole suspension and that thing just, just you're, you're bouncing on it like it's actually really nice one of the interesting things about this bike is that the front end is actually quite light like I can easily pop up the front tire uh, pop it up on this curb this is a six inch curb here and very easy to just navigate that let me run you through the LCD screen control panel first off this does rotate which is kind of cool control panel is on the left there's three buttons. The middle one is the power. Hold it down for a couple seconds. Hold down the plus button to turn on the headlight. I like that it doesn't dim the screen when the headlight comes on. And then the minus button for the walk assist mode. If you hold down the plus and minus at the same time, this is the P menu. Not a lot you can do here. I think this is the screen brightness. 10 is the auto off. 28, that is the speed. I did have it set to the highest speed for the review. And that's pretty much it. The King has an IP54 waterproof rating, a one-year warranty, and free shipping in the lower 48s. Overall, there is a lot to love about this. It's an affordable price for a fat bike. It performs like a bike in the $2,000 range. You have nice hydraulic brakes, cushy suspension, a very fast speed, good hill climbing ability. I mean, every test that I put it through, just, it, it, it destroyed it. I can see why they named it the King. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy the review. I appreciate you hopping on here and checking out my content, and have a good day. Thank you very much.